guys, so on tonight's video I'll be doing a quick tutorial on how I painted my tiger print using Griffhound models. Now, by the end of the tutorial, this is what you'll be aiming for. It does look quite difficult, but it's actually relatively easy and quick to pick up. So, leave that there as our target. He will watch over us. Now, to begin with, you will need to base coat one Griffhound model using Jukero Orange base paint. Now ideally you'll need to do this over a white base spray such as Corax White or if you want to use anything else uh, it, it might not be as bright so use a white base coat to get the brightest colours out of this. Okay. Now once you've completed your Jukera Orange all over then we can go on to the next steps. Now as you can see different parts of the bodies are more prominent than others. Now what I like to do is create lighter skin tones or fur tones on my miniatures. So, always shake your paint. Once you've got your first base coat on, you can then start looking at adding tones and shades and things. Now I use the Golden Maple size zero brush. Mine's a little bit frayed from overuse but it doesn't stop me from being able to do what I want to do. Okay. So dampen the brush. Apologies if this keeps going out of focus. So dampen your brush, get a little bit of Jacara Orange and I'm gonna be going across the back here. Back and thighs are the sort of the more prominent ones. And then once you've got light wet coat there, Clean your brush so you don't get your white dirty. And you can add a streak across the back there. Now I do have another video for wet blending techniques. If you were curious to know how I did mine. Again, it's quite easy once you get the hang of it. And it's quite satisfying because I'm not really one for using the new Cosh Trust paints um, as I prefer sort of the challenge of building up my colours. So, any muscles or sinews, the butt of the Griffhound, the thighs and the back. And just make sure that this stomach bit here blends into the white so it doesn't look like block painting. Now depending how bright you go is entirely up to you. I like more of a subtle build up rather than a prominent sticking out white kind of colour. But it is down to preference and what results you're looking for by the end. Okay. Now the underside, if you look at a tiger, has got white bellies, but it depends if you want to go with a dark belly. I'm just leaving mine as it is. Now once you're quite happy with your highlighted areas, so I've gone for the back and thighs. I've left the head for now because it's not as important. I didn't do any tiger print on the last one. Okay. Now once you're happy with that, can do some work on the tail to start with. So you've got your Jakira orange to begin with. I should probably shake my black a little bit. There we go. Now as you can see from this one, got nice black tuft there. So that's what we're gonna do on this one as well. So just on the tips, we're going to add the blacks. I'm using Abaddon black for this one. Do it on both sides. 
then clean your brush. Then you can get a dab of the base orange and start trying to blend it into the black, into the base there. So it should be darker on the edges, a slightly darker shade of sort of orange brown in the middle, coming out to the Jacquera orange by the middle of the tail. Now, depending how dark you want it, I prefer using Abaddon Black, but you could use a dark shade of brown like Dryad Bark if you wanted, or Rhinox Hide. Just depends what kind of, you know, what color scheme you're going for, what outcome you want, and what it is that you prefer. So I'm quite happy with my tail tuft as it is. It's drying. So once you've done your base coat of Jacquera Orange, then you've added some Corax White blended in to the highlighted areas and your black tail tip. Once that's all dry, here's what I did earlier, you can go over the whole thing in Agrax Earthshade. Now, as you can see, it's gone a slightly shade of orange brown now. Now, I did find that on the smooth surfaces where there's less crevices, it does become quite streaky and watermarked looking. So I would get a damp brush and go over the thighs and the back to take off some of that Agrax Earth shade before it dried because I didn't want to have that streaky, dirty look. Okay. Now, I'm quite happy with this one. This is going to be a quick demo obviously if you take a little bit more time to get the shades that you want now once the Agrax earth shade is dry the next step is building up your yellow colors so if you've seen a tiger or pictures you can see there's quite a few yellow tones and for this I use the flash gets yellow Now, for this, I used a Citadel starter brush for the dyed dry brushing bit that I'm going to do. It's perfect for it. So just keep your brush dry. Make sure your model is dry. It's a little bit damp where I've just put water on it. So dry that off a bit. Now, what you're aiming for is dip your brush in on the tip, run it across your hand until you start seeing your sort of skin lines in between the paints on your hand. That's when you know you've got the sort of the right amount of paint on your brush. And all you need to do is go over the highlighted areas mainly. So we'll start with his thigh here and across the tendons. Put a little bit more light on there. Again, how bright you want it is entirely up to you. It's just getting that nice skin tone across the back and the thighs. Turn it over, do the other side. Anything that's sort of sticking out prominently will have that yellow shade on it. Now for this bit, I did actually go over the feathered area as well, just to keep the color, um, the color scheme intact and together. So I'm not sort of creating multiple shades as I go back and fill anything in. So working backwards on the feathers. So it's only the edges that catch that yellow. So we don't want to fill the feathers in. We still want to keep that browny orangey color, but add that highlight. Now with these feathers, I always make sure that I add more highlight on the sides and the top with them being exposed to the light and then less so on the underside. And then obviously you've got the eyebrows 
and on this bit sometimes doing your brush in circular motions gets off enough paint for what you need and then I'm just going to go over slightly again on the back and thighs making sure that I leave the underbelly the original brown as you can see there's this slightly yellow tones there okay I will get some photos of each phase for you if my lighting is not great for this video so apologies in advance but I will get some pictures now once you're quite happy with yellow tones you're ready for the next step which is literally just adding on the stripes again Abaddon black now for this one I used my smallest brush which is the golden maple 5 slash 0 size which is perfect now I'm going to refer to this model quickly now as you can see across the back the stripes just go across in straight well not straight lines but you get the idea just across there and then from the thighs the stripes from the back continue down to the thighs which then curve into the underbelly and then the tail stripes just go across like they would on a normal cap so the best and easiest way to do this is to start with the stripes across the back so you can get your bearings now for this I'm going to use my magnifying glass now I'm going to start with the back stripes just making sure you go right across the back don't press too hard on the brush because you don't want thick bold lines you want thin delicate lines if you want to add sort of a little curvature on them just to make them look like tiger stripes then even better they don't need to be straight because they're not going to be straight in real life And how many stripes you do and how clumped together you have them again entirely up to you sometimes having a slightly damp brush with a smidgen of paint is enough to get the right size stripes on this and there we go so first set of stripes across the back As you can see just straight across now the tail as I said is quite easy you just literally go across the top doesn't matter if it's straight and then follow it around the tail to create a ring first two stripes on the tail and once you're happy that you've done all the way down depends how far down you want to go if you want to add some white bits in there as well it's entirely up to you but obviously I prefer to use my light skin tones to add that lighter bit on there now for the legs as I mentioned they need to go from the back and curve into the underbelly so this is where let's try and work this backwards so working down from the back into the underbelly do that on the other side now for the front arms 
slightly different because rather than them going towards the underbelly, they actually go towards the chest. So for this one, you need to go from the chest back towards the back, like a little curve. So we'll start with the front one here. Obviously it's got the harness on there as well, so you won't see too much of the chest. That won't be an issue. Now for the first one I did, I didn't go too far down on the front paws. I didn't want to lose too much of the colour. clear is it so as you can see with the chest there I'll post some pictures but you need to go from this elbow towards the chest area and that's literally all you need to do now I did go over once I was done with this with some Corax white to highlight the feathers across here and some more of the tendons and things just to add a little bit more contrast and shading and then for the harness all I used was the Retributor Gold I'm using Corax White for the highlights and Doombull Brown for the leather harness and for shades every time I use purple I like to use a Drifty Violet shader for the gold parts and in terms of basing it just depends on what you're after I used sand and static grass for mine so yeah that's literally it I will post some pictures throughout this video as well just to have clear pictures and of what I'm trying to demonstrate but if you've got any questions please don't hesitate to comment below thanks now bye mm -hmm.